It's the same picture, guys. This is huge. Okay, it's not completely identical. Maybe I should get out of your way. But on the uh, left-hand side, you can see I'm, I'm panning through here. On the left-hand side, you see FSR 2.0 at the quality setting at 1440p. And on the right-hand side, we see 1440p DLSS quality. Notice the frame rates are very similar, and this is running on an RTX 3060. So this is NVIDIA hardware. That's how we can uh, capture DLSS and FSR 2.0 at the same time. And even on the NVIDIA hardware, where it can accelerate DLSS on the tensor cores, the performance is very similar, and the image quality is extremely similar. It's not identical. I see some fine lines, like if, if you look in the, the distance there behind the glass at this filing cabinet, it's a little bit hard to see. I feel like there might be some slightly, very slightly uh, more detail retrieved behind that glass and things like that from the DLSS one, but this is pixel peeping for tiny differences. If we compare this versus FSR 1.0, it's a completely different story. At the 1.0 setting, again, I don't know how much YouTube compression is going to destroy this, but FSR 1.0, looking at almost any of it, you can just tell there's a bit of blur to the scene. Like if you look at the stop here, uh, right there, it, we kind of look at that, like it just looks a bit fuzzier. Now, if you're not on a 1440p screen, if you're watching this like on a 1080p phone, you know, whatever, you might not see it, but take my word for it, FSR 1.0, is a, uh, you know, is, is a cool thing, but compared to FSR 2.0 at quality and DLSS quality, it's a whole different thing. This is what AMD needed. Now, to be clear, I need to give credit where it's due and you can see it linked right up here and I'll put it in my description. This was not my work because I would like to do a test for you, but the game uh, doesn't actually have the update yet. So if you're out of the loop, you maybe didn't watch my video yesterday, Ah, I'm shrink myself down so I'm not too big. Uh, AMD is launching FSR 2.0 today in the game Deathloop, and then there's other games to follow. And I think that's gonna be the biggest question now that they need to answer is game support and how fast we'll get that out here. Because um, image quality wise, this is at least as good as it needed to be. And this is from Tech Power Up, who must have got their hands on a review sample of this version of the game ahead of time. And they have a full review. And I'm not gonna spoil their full review. I think you should look at their full review. Uh, but I will uh, ha uh, take a look at their conclusion because I think that this is absolutely incredible. And one of the main things that I want to add to the testing here is I want to look at this on an actual AMD GPU because they, they used it on NVIDIA in order to compare it to DLSS, which makes sense. But I'd like to test it on AMD hardware myself once the patch is available. And I'd also like to test it out on other NVIDIA GPUs that aren't RTX cards. Like I'd like to test it on a uh, my 1060, which is below AMD's recommended hardware. They say 1070 or above for use at 1080p and you'd wanna, anyway, the point is I, I'd like to delve into that. But here's the thing, according to Tech Power Up, so to be clear, this is their conclusion, but they've had time to actually test this out in detail and please look at their article. This is very interesting and has lots of those side-by-side -side comparisons at various resolutions and such. Um, they're actually saying it's just as good as DLSS 2.0 and actually is sometimes slightly better, sometimes slightly worse, but overall it's a huge win that AMD got this out here. And I couldn't agree more. As I said in my video yesterday, AMD absolutely needed a real DLSS competitor and it looks like they have it as long as the game support starts to expand quickly. This is massive. Now, um, the basic I, I, I downside they, they said versus DLSS is that when you're looking at, at the performance settings, so when you're looking at it at their quality settings, they said that it's basically the same with, you know, there's little differences here and there, sometimes better, sometimes worse for each technology. Now at the quality settings is what I'd recommend most people use it at anyway. But if you're trying to use it on a GPU that's really too weak for the resolution you're looking at, you could push further. And when that's the case, uh, they did say that DLSS looked slightly better at the more aggressive settings like performance setting. Um, they were also saying that thin geometry also looks a bit more detailed with DLSS. 
uh, but it's a very close outcome overall. And again, DLSS had, has had a lot more time to fine tune uh, their technology. So, you know, FSR 2.0, maybe we'll see a 2.1 coming with, with even uh, better stuff. So uh, they said the only noteworthy case is when fine line geometry like a fence is sitting behind other fine geometry like vegetation. And that they also said that DLSS handles ghosting a little bit better overall. Although they did say that the visual artifacts in DLSS are slightly more distracting than in FSR 2.0. And they did say that the ghosting wasn't a serious issue when I was reading through uh, more of this. So this is really interesting. Uh, it looks like it, it, like it in some ways is as good or better than DLSS 2.0, but in some ways worse. Overall, from what I looked at with all of their uh, comparisons, I would say that maybe DLSS has a slight edge, but I would say it's it's such a small difference, it's kind of irrelevant and it'll be, only be noticed in pixel peeping. But that being said, I haven't tested it myself on my own screen yet, which I would really, really, really like to do. And I plan on doing that. Anyway, we've got other huge news today though. AMD is just absolutely firing off on all of their weaknesses it appears. Because in addition to the lack of DLSS, one of the big complaints a lot of people have about AMD and choosing an AMD GPU is that their DX11 performance underperforms versus the uh, GPUs that it can match uh, at DX12 when you're looking at the NVIDIA competitors. Well, it, the, the AMD has a graphics driver preview, so this isn't in their main feed, but there's a preview available uh, for an upcoming May update, which apparently uh, gives huge, well, sometimes minor, but sometimes huge performance gains at DX11, meaning they're looking at shoring up their DX11 disadvantage, with some games like Total War Saga Troy gaining 17% performance through this update. Whereas a lot of other games, it's more of this like 3 to 5% kind of gains, Valorant seeing a 7% gain, um, but it looks like in some independent testing, like these were AMD's claims, like Capframe X said that Crisis Remastered uh, could be up to 24% faster, and that's some um, independent testing from, from Capframe X. And I've looked at this in my comment section as well as other people reviewing it online already, and while I haven't tested it myself, I will say people are confirming. There are significant performance gains on DX11 titles with this update. Now, I, I'm not sure if there's any downsides or issues um, that people are having with this driver set, so I, I'd be interested in exploring this further, but wow. Also, along with that same update, they're updating RSR. So if you're not familiar with RSR, this is kind of like FSR, but it's applied at the driver level and not FSR 2.0. This is the uh, 1.0 version basically, but update, but applied to games that don't actually support it at, at, at the, the end of the rendering process. So it doesn't look quite as good. Uh, but what's neat is they're uh, adding in a sharpening filter, which can be fine tuned into the driver, which is really nice because different people have different preferences for sharpening or sometimes certain games could benefit from more sharpening than others. And so you're gonna have uh, manual control over that in the driver. So this is another awesome update. This is fantastic. Now, Nvidia, not to be outdone, is also shoring up one of their uh, weaknesses, which is, again, when people are deciding which GPU to buy, if you use Linux, it's usually better to go AMD because AMD has open source drivers and it's much easier for uh, Linux to have strong driver support. Well, m maybe Nvidia is finally getting a little bit worried about the competition here, I don't know. Uh, but they are now publishing a Linux GPU kernel module as open source with dual GPL MIT license, starting with the R515 driver release. And you can find the source code for this kernel modules in the NVIDIA GPU kernel module repo on GitHub. So this is a big deal for Linux users who might uh, start to be able to consider NVIDIA GPUs uh, a lot more seriously if uh, NVIDIA starts taking these open source Linux drivers more seriously. Now, yesterday we had the official unveiling of the uh, Intel I uh, well, 12800HX. In other words, they're Alder Lake HX lineups for laptops, high-end CPUs. And apparently there's already a review published on the Chinese social pl uh, media platform uh, by uh, a Golden Pig upgrade pack team. 
Well, what did the Golden Pig have to say? Uh, well, they ran it, uh, the, the HX version up against the H version. This is 12700H versus 12800HX. And it does appear to basically be two identical Lenovo Y9000P gaming laptops with the same GPU and memory configuration, but then with that GPU change, uh, sorry, the CPU changed out here. And it looks like in single threaded performance, things were basically identical, but it's looking like when multi-threading can be taken advantage of, we could see like a 15% gain. So nothing, you know, just like, ah, you know, your whole life will change <laughs> between the two. And also gaming performance did seem about the same. Also, we get a quick uh, look here. We get a die shot at the Intel Meteor Lake um, Intel 14th Gen processors. So, hey, neat, a die shot. And there's what things in the picture actually are. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, there you go. And again, links to everything I talk about will be in the description if you want to take a closer look. And then we also are seeing AMD achieving record x86 CPU market share in quarter one of 2022, with the desktop and notebook segment uh, recovering and server share now up to 11.6%. If you're interested in more of those full details, I will link this article, uh, but you can see their uh, changes over time right there. And it's looking like they're making some big gains if you look at it back compared to 2018 um, in, in these segments. All right, guys, that's it for today. Like I said, when I actually get access to Deathloop and have some free time, because I've got to go like teach and, and play with my kids and stuff. So probably tonight, hopefully the patch is out by then, I'll stay up late, test some things. Should I start with the 1060? I'm really interested in the 1060 um, to see if it actually, for one thing, can run it and if it can run it fast enough to actually uh, improve performance in a meaningful way. Because I think that's the big question is whether it can compute the algorithm fast enough given its hardware to actually get a performance gain from lowering the resolution internally. That's the big question. But I'd also like to see this on actual AMD hardware, maybe look at ray tracing performance on AMD when using this in death loop, that kind of thing. What would you guys like to see? You could let me know in the comment section. We'll see what I have time for. And I hope all of you have an excellent day.